one of the ideas I got from some of the questions was um, your topics for infected rain seem to be your release for negativity and some of that dark uh, emotional uh, side that you have. Uh, someone wanted to know if you had a love song or or maybe a, a step further is, would you ever uh, have a song that was more uh, geared towards that spectrum? Oh, yeah. But I do have oh. love songs. I do. I do right. with the Rain and I do with Dead Dealer Union and I do have some new ones that will come out uh, with the newer albums with both bands. I do because oh, awesome. I'm a human being and I do feel all kinds of emotions and often um they are they drive me to write about it uh love songs the thing is people always confuse love songs with happy songs love oh, songs are not necessarily right. always happy songs because lo love is very difficult and love is very uh, i mean it, it a lot of people would say it shouldn't be difficult yes correct but it shouldn't be easy either um Love should be unconditional. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it should be uh, unconditional. Absolutely. But love is difficult, especially nowadays. So difficult because um, because of internet, because of different generation and different um, views on life and different like values on life that people have. I feel like whenever I speak up about my values, people look like me and I'm like, are you a hundred years old? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? <laughs> but 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 I stick with them because those are my values and I want that. And if I cannot have that, I'd much rather be alone. You know what I mean? Right. So often love songs are not necessarily happy songs because love hurts so much. <laughs> you, like, it's it can both. It's you. the positive and the you. negative, right? Yeah, it can hurt you even when it doesn't try to hurt you it hurts you you know so yeah i have a lot of love songs right. just uh, open your heart for them and listen <laughs> to them i do have almost every single album has one wow that's great it's your vocal uh expressionalism and your how you present the lyrics people like me i'm guilty i assume that this song is going to be about you know uh strife and turmoil and things like that. <laughs> um, but then like just popped in my head, like probably the most widely known love song that I would be able to think is Jolene, the song by Dolly Parton. Like that's the saddest love song on the planet that's been covered a million times. So like I never even thought to look at it that way, but your perspective is like, you know, uh, it's, it's not just the flowers and the gardens and you know the candies and you know all that the the harsh reality unfortunately is is both sides you know and it seems like the the more painful part of it for metal musicians is easier to tap into i think lyrically because it's such a strong feeling um mm. and it's almost easier to maybe scream about that type of feeling than something that's a little more uh, I want to say about, on the surface, but a little lighter content. Yeah, but because if you think about it, uh, I'm sure everyone that is watching and you guys included have heard at least one time in your life that the only people that can hurt you most are people you love. <laughs> sure. Because you love them, because you love them so much, what they do, like, might not be that serious, but you let it affect you because you love them and you're like oh what why <laughs> you know <laughs> but and then, then you try to explain up. that to someone else and they're like what why are you like why yeah. are you miserable over this yeah, like, yeah. this exactly. <laughs> doesn't make sense but because you feel it so strongly it's uh, you know, if, it cripples you same thing could be can be done by a stranger to you you'll be like i don't give a shit you know, same thing, even worse sometimes. But like this one person, a friend, a family member, your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, or husband, whatever it is that you are at the moment dealing with, right? Yeah, people that you let in as as, as close as it is physically possible can hurt you the most, 100%.
right? Because it's that connection. It's like, well, this isn't someone I don't care about. This is someone that knows all of my secrets and knows mm -hmm. the buttons that I have. To yeah, be and they and maybe and they use like, them, right? <laughs> right, it sucks. <laughs> oh my god, it's so yeah, true. Uh, the that insider info it's almost like and that's why so many people have you know they talk about they have a wall or they've built up this thing around it's like you have to be very sparingly with mm. your true emotions um and not not just being musicians and being you know in the public um just everyone it's like if someone has like the key to get into this door of who you really are and your emotions. They will use it sooner or later. It's and it and it may not even be they're not trying to be vindictive or but it's like it's like it just happens, you know. Uh, yeah. but it, it definitely ha has the most weight when it comes to like just crushing your soul and like ah. But then like you said, well, we'll have to learn, we have to gain some experience from this. Uh and at the end of the day, it makes it acceptable to a point because it's like well this person i've invested so much time and energy into we can take these hits back and forth together uh yeah. and it doesn't change your relationship or in some cases it does make it stronger when you communicate and say look you know when you mentioned a b c or d it triggers me and, yeah. and it's and it's not something that maybe at that moment was funny or light-hearted um but you can you you do grow from it when you're in, in a healthy relationship with a different person, you know? Um, but it's, yeah, that pain is just like brutal. <laughs> your worst enemy is like your best friend or your partner, you know, in some and cases. And you know why this happens? I, I mean, it's a, a theory of mine. Um, I think that that happens because after a while in any kind of relationship that we are talking about, even friends, absolutely friends often are, so so close to us you know like we do have like either a, a best friend or a friend that we know all our life that knows us the best or anything like that right um any kind of relationship even with parents that happens because when there's love especially when there's love between these two people for a while uh people relax that's what happens mm. people relax and they forget about hey, I have to be gentle with her because mm -hmm. this thing is her trigger. And it's okay for her to have her own triggers because I have my own triggers, right? For whatever reason it is, even if I don't understand why this triggers her, she might have a reason she, or he might have a reason, you know? And right. I will be gentle because I know that's a sensitive topic for her. So I will be cautious and talk to her about it in the most loving, gentle, calm way to talk, to make sure that, you know, we talked about it and we didn't just leave something unspoken that might come out later, you know? Okay. That's why it happens only and because people relax. And we don't do it <laughs> again. And as you said, we don't do it with, um, like we don't, we're not malicious and, 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 and we don't do it necessarily in this, like with 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 the anger or with negativity we do it just because we relax we don't think and we sleepwalk just like i said we mm. sleep we do not break the 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 our patterns by by being more cautious by being more aware oh shit okay uh this bothers me very much but this is his trigger for example right okay let me think about how i'm gonna talk to him about this before I talk to him, so I'm not fucking this up because I don't want to hurt him, <laughs> but I do want him to understand that this and this and this hurt me. So if there's like, it has to be a fair balance between partners, friendship and fair balance, not of give and take necessarily, right? But of understanding and of um, respect towards each other because- right love and understanding and respect come hand to hand together there is no one without another there's it can't be love without understanding and respect cannot that's not true love it's just an infatuation or something mm. 
Absolutely. And it's it's really hard nowadays, especially with so much external information going on about love and relationships and stuff. The the first thing that we tend to do when someone hurts something or hurts us or says something that you know is painful is we jump to blaming character oh, yeah. and like, oh well, that person's just like that, or they feel like they're just different or this. And if we just take the time to take a step back and think about what's causing this person to act that way towards me. Like, I know I care about this person. I know they're a good person. They're trying to do the right thing. So what happened that caused this interaction instead of just assuming that that person is like that and there's nothing we can do about it, which is the most useless thing. Like, <laughs> I don't I don't think you would have love for this kind of person in the first place if yeah. you weren't willing to think that, you know, maybe something was going on differently that was causing them to do something mean to you. They're not just mean for the sake of being malicious, like you said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah, it's almost always uh, that person internal workings uh, and having to be uh, empathetic and, and realize, well, this person's reacting not necessarily because of me from an outside influence. It's they mm -hmm. have something going on inside their head or in their relations other relationships in their life um that's something i had to learn very quickly uh especially you know dealing with a lot of artists dealing with uh, a lot of other businesses everyone from bands and musicians and and, and um, business owners that that type of stuff um is you can't be like self-centered all the time you know um showing empathy towards other people and and thinking outside of yourself uh, is a huge thing that I'm always learning. Like you're never going to know everything you can know about it. But taking that first step and saying, well, this person that I've spent a lot of time getting to know and investing in uh, each other's emotions um, just did something really messed up to me. Yeah. Like, and I'll talk to my wife about this a lot, and she's a huge help. Uh, for my mental state because uh, mm -hmm. he's also a, a musician oh and by the way lena she wanted uh me to personally thank you for bringing up um i don't want to talk about women in, in metal my wife was like tell her i personally her name is simon um thank her so much for that because it's the we're over it is, yeah, is everybody's it, over it guys so, everybody's um, over it Let's judge everyone on what they can do. Like I always correct people when they're like, oh, she's like one of the best female singers I've heard. I'm like, no, she's one of the best singers you've heard in stop.com forward slash. Don't need to keep talking. Um, it's, it's comparing apples to like baseball cards or something. It's, it's yeah. everyone that does what they do. Um, you look at its own merit. And then if you want to be comparative and rate things, which humankind always has to have, oh. this is my favorite, this is better. It's like, yeah. well, just say, you know, like me personally, my favorite singers, yes, are mostly female. But the reason that is, is because the range, like your screams, I would put against any guy, any dude that says he can scream in a band. And it's like, well compare yourself to this person not this female singer but compare yourself to this person and let's see how it stacks up like how how much energy do you feel when someone's on the mic and um i i haven't got to see you guys yet i know there's a big u.s tour coming hopefully it'll be uh in, in virginia and also in south carolina where jack is um it, it's on my bucket list like i have to see yeah uh infected rain live um and i'm looking forward to that but uh, yes this autumn this autumn we have a u.s tour the dates are already announced we are going to be on tour with gemini syndrome and wednesday 13 oh wow yeah very and nice. uh, yeah it's going to be a very nice tour um uh, and we are going to go some places we've never played in uh before in the u.s and yeah, look up the dates are on infectedrain.com or on social media. We've we've um, announced it a while back, but 
because we are um, in the middle of this European tour, uh, obviously a lot of information about what's going on now kind of overwhelmed the announcement of, hey, in fall, we're coming back to the US and I know a lot of people missed it, but we are slowly gonna start promoting it as well uh, in a month or so, some more. Uh, but yeah, we are coming to the US, the dates are already available, the tickets are already available, the places and the names of the places are <laughs> Awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, I, I missed it. I don't know how I, I saw yeah. an, an announcement that there was a tour coming up and you and I talked about maybe offering something special uh, right. that people ask about from you. <laughs> so maybe that'll uh, come through this time. It would be yeah. awesome. I think look, for everybody. look up the dates and tell me, uh, you know, later, uh, let me know if they work out for you. Sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Make a note. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but everything you've said and mentioned is very, very true. And I want to underline one more time that that is um, a rule that works with every kind of, every type of love out there, every type of love, a parent love, a child love to their parents, a friendship love type of love, a, a, a um, romantic type of love any kind no matter what you prefer loving as well let's talk about that mm, right. uh, you know um it's it, it it's a rule that is i'm i'm just you know i'm um i'm thinking about it often because um i have a younger sister that is actually a half sister uh, we have the same mother and she is the youngest of all of us and i'm the oldest and um she's been one of the most um let's say um what's the correct word to use here um she's been one of the most unique um teenagers <laughs> all of us. I'll, I'll, oh uh jack jack can talk about this for yeah. quite a few hours with uh uh teenagers and growing up and being a unique individual yeah well uh, well the thing, is, the thing is it makes me think about it a lot and i will give you the word of course and and, and hear you out because um often um her ways hurt my mother very much very much you know and 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 mm, my sisters including me are trying my, our best to help our mother because my mom she had her uh, later uh in life she was 41 when she had her and now the girl is 17 and the past three years were the most difficult and the most difficult to understand her the most difficult behavior and which is uh typical for um teenagers but also very unusual for our family so we all are facing something we never faced before because yes we've been teenagers but we had a pretty difficult uh, family slash life situation where we kind of couldn't um, really do anything like crazy that teenagers like can do, let's say that. So I often think about this love relationship between a daughter and a mother, often uh, looking into this example. And that's exactly where Obviously, talking to her is more difficult because she, uh, as a, it's a very common thing that teenagers do is thinking that, you know, their parents and their older sisters don't know anything because they're older and they come from different generation. So my friends know better, you know, my right. friends know better what's good for me or in general now, right? So, so we are trying to talk to our mother instead to, to, to maybe have her see uh, you know the the our sister in a different light or uh, try to have different approach or something like that you know which is very difficult because of course there's unconditional love but at the same time you know because she loves her so much she hurt like she gets so hurt and that's exactly yeah. like that's why i wanted to bring it up as an example uh, my sister is not a bad person at all my sister is not malicious or anything like that she's great she's very strong and she's determined and all that and I love her to pieces but at the same time I'm so mad at her when she hurts my mother you know so mad 
because yeah because and I but I realized that the reason why my mom gets so hurt is because she loves her so much just like in any love relationship right absolutely I uh I have a similar kind of upbringing except that my brother and I are a year and a half apart he's a younger brother mm -hmm. and um we're we're so polar opposite that okay. it's insane like I'm he's like Thor to my Loki um you know I'm like <laughs> long-haired guitar player musician and he was always like you know into sports outside doing stuff but he he was totally off the walls as a teenager as well and like really gave my mother a hard time gave me a hard time um but it it gets better we're actually closer now than we we ever have been um you know through all those rough years and he's doing great now um he he joined the military and is like oh. you know really just it it gets a lot better and the the of unconditional course. love I know it will be really absolutely, wins out. absolutely. Yeah. It's just what do you do in the moment, you know, because a lot of parents give up and they are like, OK, I don't love you anymore or whatever, you know, because you're hurting me because a lot of people are very selfish. Majority of people are selfish. Right. Uh, sure. Ninety percent of people are selfish. And there's nothing wrong with that. We have to learn to be a little bit selfish for our own sake. Mm -hmm. However, you know, sometimes there's no filter and, you know, um, there's like this. OK, the fact that I'm your mother uh, you know, it has nothing to do with me forgiving you. And a lot of people, a lot of families don't talk for years because of that, because they think that what happened was so drastic that it's worth not talking your entire life or something like that. You know, there's so many examples like that. So many. However, you know, like, again, there's nobody's perfect. No mother is perfect. No father is perfect. No child is perfect. No boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband is perfect. Nobody is perfect. And understanding and accepting that nobody's perfect, including you, <laughs> including you, because a lot of people are, yeah, yeah nobody's perfect besides me, you know? Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, everyone thinks that. <laughs> if they don't say that, <laughs> even if they don't say that, they think that inside right. of their head, you know, subconsciously or, or not, I don't know, but they always think that they, no matter what, they were right because you did this. And that's the human problem. This is our global problem of our society is thinking that you're better than everybody else right we're totally agree we're really just all part of one consciousness i love the the comedians and the smart thinkers from like the 70s 80s um i have a, a poster of, of bill hicks a painting that sets over my head i i love his concepts and things it's like we're all experiencing experiencing this with our consciousness together, but with our own perspective. And one thing, whenever there's conflicts and, and fights, um, especially with loved ones and people you have relationships with, it's getting the other person to, to see outside of themselves and see what their actions are doing to someone that cares about them so much. And- and It's a lot of effort, that's the thing. Uh, people right. are right like just for five seconds to be like like in your case you know talking to your sisters look at how your actions are making your mother feel this is your mother she gave birth to you you were you were part of her body and now are an extension of her and mm -hmm. nothing that's happening in your life at, at the end of all of this situation nothing is worth uh treatment of her to cause these feelings because of something that you personally feel is so important in this moment um yeah. and and that's something i try to learn and 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 research and, and educate myself to to see that perspective outside of yourself because really after it passes and things calm down and go back to normal your relationship is still going to be there uh, but you don't want to be the reason that's causing someone so much anguish and pain uh, for something that, like Jack said earlier, maybe something's like really insignificant and someone's like, why is that so important, you know? And it's really not, it's it's part of that um, that self-centeredness, you know, Thank and being- you. I being was just self. about to mention, <laughs> I was just about to mention, self of self-importance is a poison, but we all have it. And, and if we don't learn to filter it or to manage it or to balance it, 
we will be in a lot of trouble. Like I, my theory about, you know, all the people that actually commit big, big crimes and, and, and actually do malicious things is exactly this self of self importance is never balanced with the reality ever. Like if you have a good filter and a good balance between the two, you will make the right decisions. Even when you make mistakes, you will know how to fix them. It won't take, uh, you know, it, your, your so-called crown on your head won't fall if you will say, I'm sorry, <laughs> I made a mistake. It came out wrong. It was not my intention or stuff like that, you know? And, and that can be applied to everything. And in this case, you know, she is a teenager that has not enough experience in life and not enough knowledge to choose the right words to talk to my mother and get what she wants by talking calmly and, and finding compromise with her parent. Uh, in, in, a, in a different relationship, when, when there's two adults that have the same, same exact thing, there's a problem, there's something someone wants and the other does not listen or does not feel or does not know. And the person that wants something, instead of talking calmly and, and explain and deliver uh, nicely with respect and understanding towards the person they claim to love, right? Because it's so easy to say, I love you. <laughs> try to show it, try to put it right. into everyday life. So when you actually do that, you will avoid, avoid um, you know, um, arguments, confrontation, and all the other things that are super scary out there that I cannot believe that people do in a relationship, you know, like calling each other names or uh, hitting each other or stuff like that, you know, people still do that. And why? Because self of self importance is not managed right. And, and they are so, the ego is so high up there. Mm. Purpose, yeah. not because they are bad people. <laughs> right there. Not, on purpose. not on purpose. They are not bad people. It's right. just never thought about it. Nobody ever told them or guided them towards this knowledge to understand that, oh shit, yeah, this is I did not do this on purpose. And recognizing that I made a mistake not on purpose, it's easier than going through all this like trouble of arguments, fights hurt and and destruction you know so this is definitely it's like my life motto control yourself of self-importance we all have it we all have it i have it you have it we all have it and sometimes even people that know everything about it and study it cannot control it in certain situations because it you know it overwhelms you and you just react and you're like fuck i should not say that but it takes a lot of willpower i guess mm -hmm. to recognize it immediately or after i don't know next day to like understand where was your mistake where was your what was your trigger and maybe talk about the fact that hey if you will recognize that this is my trigger i promise you that will never happen again because it's just something i couldn't control you know if that's not too difficult for you in any relationship, like here with, you know, my sister and my mother, my mom, she just wants to make sure that my sister is safe, that my sister is smart in situations, right? When she's not home and all my sister have to do, in my opinion, is make sure that my mother trusts her. And, and, and if there's going to be trust, there's going to be no more fights about you didn't come at home at the same time. Why didn't you answer my phone? Where were you? I found out that you were there or here, right? If you want the trust, give trust. You want love, give love, give understanding. Often does it's not really how it works. People don't see it and they still hurt you. But with time, especially in a family relationship, it will work. Of course, there are situations out there where, you know, the fact that you are blood does not mean your family, honestly, mm. with all due respect. Right. I will do everything in my power to be as close as possible to my close family. But if something happens and it's impossible to fix or it's impossible to get through those people, it's okay. We we lose people, we gain people. It hurts when it's family. It hurts when it's someone you love for years. Absolutely. Of course it does because we get comfortable having certain people around, having certain um 
situations around and then when we don't have it we think it's the end of the world and i've been i've been like that i've been thinking that when you know i've lost people in my life i've been yeah for sure and it's desperate times but sometimes it's better because you know universe in general and some sort of energy out there it is helping us um eventually get rid of the poison it's at least guiding us towards that and and maybe it's for the best right yeah it's the whole the mantra of do on to others is you would have done on to you uh, and, and getting outside of that self-centeredness uh to see that perspective is i think a big thing just everyone in general needs to learn and it's it's balancing that emotional state that you're in you know when it's a conflict or you're interacting or reacting and it's an immediate emotional thing that happens and then trying to balance that with the logic of you know step back from this and see all the perspectives outside of it and and relating to everyone involved uh to resolve something you know conflict resolution should be taught from day one look at the countries trying to take yeah. other countries over with conflict whereas it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like you said the times we're in are just complete insanity you know uh, okay. you have to start small with yourself to to make some accomplishments that is also that is also self of self importance and that the the literal uh response to that that the answer to that is be humble no matter what be humble even if you made a mistake you can fix it no matter how big the mistake if and only you're humble right you know but people are not humble nobody's humble nobody because it's a constant you know um <laughs> It will it will sound vulgar, but it's it's constant <laughs> uh, measuring dicks, constant, yeah. no matter what between countries, between people, between bands, between fans. Right. Why? Why? It's not necessary, not at all. Yeah, unfortunately, it's programmed into the male psyche because I, I know it happens on a small amount um, with with females being competitive. Um, but it, you don't have nearly the same uh, measurement requirements that are expected by your gender. Um, and guys are the worst. I'll be the first to tell you. We've caused more problems as a gender to society over any person, place, or thing. Um, I think in general, we as males need to step back. And like you said, our self-importance needs to be reevaluated. Um, and there's dudes that may click end and unfollow and mm -hmm. cancel their subscriptions <laughs> uh, to my businesses. But it's it's legit. It's for real. Um, listening to the perspective of uh, the other gender of, of females, just you know, and my wife helps me a lot with this too. It's like understand why females tend to be competitive to the point is because they're they're already disadvantaged by a male look at the numbers of jobs women get paid less there's a huge thing in hollywood with you know female actors getting paid so much less just because they're female so like when you get up in the morning you already have the cards stacked against you so to speak um and me growing as a person is understanding that and and uh, relating to it. And when I talk to people, everyone gets talked to the same way. Uh, you don't judge people uh, on a preconceived idea you have. Now, if you talk to somebody and they're just a complete dirt bag to you and are rude and disrespectful and like yourself, your self importance level is off the charts, it's like, okay, well, I know to stay clear of you that's cool. You're in a place where you're doing your thing, but I'm going to have to navigate and change things around a little bit. Um, and I live that every day with, you know, my life and my, my businesses. If, if someone approaches that I, I vibe well with, then I immerse myself in their art. Jack can attest to this to any day of the week, how, how much, um, 
I try to absorb everything that because it's interesting to me. It motivates me. Awesome. It's uh, triggering things where I just I feel uh, super energized. Um, Lena, Infected Rain, your, your music is one like one of the first videos I saw. Um, I was on YouTube or something. And there's like four wheelers in the video. It's one of the early videos that you guys did. And I'm like, I was like, you know, I've seen that in uh, Tears for Fears when I was a kid that guys are riding ATVs and dirt bikes in the desert. I'm like, that's what I did when I was a kid. I'm like, I've never seen this in a metal band. Like, this is the most coolest thing. I'm like, the music's good. And it's like energetic. And there's like dirt bikes going in the background. I was like, this is the most awesome thing like connected and then from there just started listening to the band and watch videos and stuff and then you know skip forward three or four years and just reaching out to you uh on the coffee ideas um yep. and again the 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 veganism is a big thing to me like i i give a pass to a lot of people and i shouldn't because some individuals in our community are not good people um but i tend to give some people a pass just because of that it's like well you're super compassionate towards animals but you sort of forgot people are animals too um i'm sure i could name people that you would think would be super compassionate and nice because of their dietary choices let's say uh but they're not they're just not good nice people but um yeah you tend to stick with what you like and like i said you give them a pass but at the end of the day it's like people's merits ultimately uh should be how you judge things and continue that relationship and again um opening those doors and letting them in that's another thing with with male genders is we have to be macho we have to protect our sternness and our genitalia size as you said like it's this contest it's like no, it's not. Life would be so much easier to to take that out of the equation. And yeah. we're all just trying to figure out what's going on here and do what we think is best for our family, for our friends, for ourselves, um, and not harm anyone else. Hopefully, that's kind of a standard thing when people are born with not wanting to be like, you know, Dahmers and Geens. Something in that environment caused this crazy chaotic uh, personality from someone um, and just trying to uh, to navigate and, and just you know uh, don't bump anything the wrong way and and figure stuff out but uh, your perspective is just so awesome like I feel like I, I need to like run a credit card for a therapy session uh, <laughs> just, you know well, like you. Yeah. but uh, I'll be honest with you like kudos to you for actually not only just listening, but hearing out the advices and, and uh, perspectives and point of view of your wife and, you know, of people around you, like you mentioned, that you learn from. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, if people are not open-minded and they sleepwalk for a living all the time, they just get this information. Of course, they do, because there's a lot of very aware people around and people that, try at least to 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 learn to evolve to be better you know but if you are not ready or if you are not aware enough you know you're not awake you will just let this information pass by you like it's almost like it's not there but it's there I promise to every single one of you that is listening and and everyone that ever like tells me otherwise oh because I've heard that yeah, I just never had people around me that inspired me like this. I never had people then around me that inspired me like this. I chose to get inspired by little things and and from different people. I never had it not because, you know, of something that happened to me. It's just circumstances of life. And and uh, I didn't have parents that had time to dedicate to their children. I never had, you know, school that had that Thing where you know teachers would care about every single student in, in 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 as individual it was more a mass thing you know here's the knowledge give me uh homework this is your grade 
next you know this is how it was and what where i grew up where i went to school you know um and it's up to us it's our life we are in charge of our life nobody else so it's it's really awesome and refreshing to hear from you you know um that you are trying to learn from people learn from people you love and and you know you make your own conclusions and and your reality is um maybe even more colorful because of that thanks to that you know yep 100 <laughs> percent. really well said yeah it takes wow. nothing to really just humble ourselves and actually listen and see what's around us like because we can learn not necessarily from people we can learn from nature and we can learn from weather we can learn from movies books you know we don't have to necessarily learn from our family you know it, yeah it would be awesome but if you don't have that opportunity find your opportunities for free 